the physicality that was a part of the league. But if you know who you are, you should look at it as information. You can't hand check. You can't contest shots. Really heavily weighted right now with a three-point shot. You get close to the basket, a lot more of your shots will go in. <laughs> So not too long ago, Anthony Edwards was interviewed and basically said that older generations didn't have any skills and Michael Jordan was the only one in his era who had skills. This comment aggravated many NBA players who played in that era that once Magic Johnson heard about it, he was quick to clap back by saying, I never respond to a guy who never won a championship. And he has every right to say that because Magic Johnson is one of the most accomplished players in NBA history with five championships and three MVPs just to keep it short. So for Anthony Edwards, to say that wild comment and disrespect every single NBA legend in that era is unbelievable. These NBA legends transformed how basketball was played, combining finesse with toughness and skill with high basketball IQ. Edwards is one of the most promising players in the league today, and he hasn't yet achieved what those legends accomplished. I never thought he would make a statement like that because today's NBA wouldn't exist without the groundwork those legends put in. So Edwards' comments about past generations got me thinking about some of the concerns NBA legends have with today day's game and how their views highlight the changes and challenges in modern basketball. So I found clips of 15 NBA legends who share their problems with today's NBA. And after this video, I want you to comment if you agree with any of these legends takes. So enjoy the video, man. If I'm being <laughs> honest, bro, I don't think anybody in this generation could have played like 20 years ago. If I'm being 100, and this is to Ant, this is to everybody in our league, Tatum, all y'all. Let me tell y'all something, bro. 20 years ago, bro, you couldn't get to a triple step back. Nah. You hear what I'm saying to you? You couldn't get to a triple step back. And then if you shot that shit, it had to go in. You know why? Because we had, we had efficiency back in the day, my dude. And it was so fucking hard. It was too physical. And guess what? The league had to come off of it for the flow of movement to be able to have scoring go up, which is why we like to sit here and watch kind of the rat race of the high pace game, right? But bro, let's not talk about the gamingship and let's not talk about the physicality of the game back then. Real shit, because I only think half these kids in the league could have been on an NBA team 20 years ago. Straight up. The locker room was too, it was, it was, it was too grown. And you had to have that work and you had yeah. to really work on your shit. And it wasn't no, you was out two, three games. Man, your teammates, hey bro, what you doing tonight? You going? Nah, I can't go, man. My toenail off, man, I can't. Nah, bro, you can't nah. even come in here and lead no niggas nah. like that. You hear nah. me? Real shit. Nah. You have, man, it was men leading men. Trying to say, nobody bro, in this era has a mid range. Bro, you couldn't get, no, nobody. Nobody in this era has a post game. And the ones that do <laughs> look amazing. Look yeah. at Shea. Shea got a mid range. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's only like a few of them got That's what like, I'm saying, bro. Two dribble pull up. Yeah, they don't Try got to do it. Okay, young fella, if you hear me. And then y'all exhaust the ball. Y'all are dribbling the air out of the ball. Right. Y'all dribble the ball 100 times more than another nigga. Uh, I, I actually said this a, a couple of days ago on my Instagram feed is that the mid-range game is being lost. Nowadays, what you're seeing guys pump taking steps sideways, you know, on a three-point line, and you're making it a tougher shot uh, than necessarily getting into to, to the paint and, and getting something uh, mid-range. So I, I believe it's bad for our young kids that watch because what I tell my, my boys, and, 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 you know, I'm coaching the AAU team currently, and I tell them, I want you guys to pay attention to what goes on in college. Play hard, learn from the NBA, the do's and the don'ts, but don't settle for threes. Like, the, for, I hated shooting threes to start a game because you you want to kind of build your rhythm into it. Get to the free throw line, make some easy layups. And then the best time to shoot a three-pointer is off of an uh, offensive rebound. And right now, it's the it's like the first thing that the, the players do, and we have some quality, skilled shooters from behind the arc. But I like to see the bigs have more of a footing back in the game because you know you look at the big guys' field goal percentage; they're shooting, you know, the best throughout a season, maybe sixty plus percent, and that's where a lot of times your your bread's buttered. And I think we've gone away from that, and I like to see us get back to that. Rule changes that how they are now, or do you think there should be a little bit more balance to to your era? Well, I think there should be some balance. Yeah, um, I, I think it's it's really heavily weighted right now with a three point shot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really heavily weighted towards uh, scoring. However, it happens. Whether it's 100 free throws, whether it's you know 43s or whatever, they just want to see the numbers go up, and I, I think that's a bad strategy. Yeah. Um, 
you know, the, the centers are largely gone. There's a few now that are kind of whomping on people because there's no other centers to play against. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I like to see the balance. I like to see passing, which I think has been limited in this, inside, outside, you know, doing both. Um, but right now, I think they want guys to be able to run free, not be touched, and and show their talents. But I, I'm a believer if you're a player, you, you need to be able to play through a certain amount of contact, period. Um, you know, I mean, too much one-on-one -on -one a lot of times for a lot of teams, which to me is really boring to watch. Um, you know, play team basketball, pass, cut, move, make the defense make some freaking decisions and play unselfishly. And that's kind of fun to watch and play defense. You know, commit yourself to defense. You know, you call me a purist, you know, old school. No, this is the way the game was designed to be played. And it doesn't matter whether you're shooting threes or not. I mean, you just, you adjust your defense, you adjust accordingly. You don't go under screens, you jump screens. You, you just take away the three-point shot for a lot of people. I mean, you just play smart defense and make the other team have to earn what they're getting and don't make it easy for them. Make sure they're always getting challenged. You don't give them easy pass to the basket. You watch some of these games, the guy's 20 feet from the basket, he winds up driving in for a dunk. What are you kidding me? Where the hell is the defense? I mean, that's a total breakdown in defense. So, I mean, it's not a complicated game, and yet they do make it complicated. I would average 45 points in today's game if the way they play defense today where you can't hand check, you can't contest shots, you got to come on the side. In Jordan, Jordan would have averaged 45-50. In today's the game. The point I was making is you allow great shooters freedom to roam, freedom with no hand check, you can't crowd me, and I got a clear sight at the rim, then it's gonna be lights out, baby. But it's so hard to play defense in today's game because they allow the offense to go wherever they want. If a team is getting beat by 25 points and you've got your star players sitting over there laughing on the sideline, if I was the executive running that team, that person would be in my office the next day and i want to know what's so damn funny it's it's not this is serious is this the team losing or the team winning the team losing so if they're laughing over there i don't like that at all i i, I think it shows a disrespect for the game and for people playing that but the, if you watch the nba it has changed so much over the years it's about entertainment Dan, the rules are so relaxed, okay? They are just so relaxed. I think it's easier to score now than it's ever been in the history of basketball. And that's why we see the game changing a little bit, the three-point line changing. If, if I averaged 30, I lost the scoring title to Kobe the year he averaged 35. I averaged 33. Man. And I'm just thinking like, if, if I was to play in this area where it's wide open, if I can average 33 in a season, I'm going to just take it up to 43. Mm. I know 10 points more. I agree with that. Got to be. And then what's he doing in this era? God damn. You have guys standing out there heaving up threes that's really not three-point shooters. These players, more than the millennials, are focused on developing their skills uh, on the perimeter. You look at taller guys now, uh, they're gravitating more to that three-point line, which it kind of baffles me more than anything, you know, because it's a it's a lower percentage shot, number one. Second, you know, if you're physically menacing like a LeBron or a Joel Embiid, why wouldn't you want to take advantage of uh, your 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 man? The guy that's guarding you, why wouldn't you want to take advantage of him down there on the block and closer to that basket, which is going to force teams to 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 double and triple team you, which in turn, both of them are great passers, uh, which in turn was, you know, you can find open men, you know, who will who will get wide open threes, you know, and I, and, and I, I like playing the game that way, you know, but I'm old school, you know, I mean, I'm from a different era that we felt like that was one of the most effective ways, but now from an analytic standpoint, I think people see it a lot differently. I think uh, the game has changed, definitely, but you still need uh, players to still do the same thing. You know, I, I think I'd still have to play defense and I still have to be able to score. 
Um, you know, you still need someone to block shots to protect the rim. And but I, I, I was a player that did both. Uh, I, I I played defense, uh, and then I was still went down the other end and I scored. Uh, you still need people to rebound, rebound both ends. You still need you know, people to block shots. Um, so I was able to do both, and I I could shoot. I just didn't shoot uh, out to the three-point line the way that bigs uh, shoot now. But I was capable of, of doing it. I just, in my era, I remember when I first came to Georgetown, Coach Thompson, <laughs> we played Virginia. With we, Ralph Sampson? With Ralph Sampson. Ralph took a shot from about the top of the, the key right here, uh, the top of the, the, the free throw line right here. And I came down and took one from the <laughs> from the, the, the free throw line, and Coach Thompson called a timeout. He cursed me out. He said, son, get your butt <laughs> in the paint. But now it's a different era. It's a different era. You know, bigs, now they want to shoot threes. Uh, you know, and it's it's that's the way the game uh, has progressed. And, you know, people when I was in the NBA, all, people are always asking me, where are the centers? And now the centers uh, are, the, are the ones out there shooting threes and the, guard, and the guards are the ones that are posting up. Off the ball in a playoff game. Oh, he's great. Getting grabbed and held by Marcus Smart. They're attached to him at all times. Right. Then when I watch Larry Bird come off a pin down and no one's within five feet of him and they're shooting the gap. You're telling me one is more physical than the other? You're telling me that's more physical than, than Steph Curry being grabbed and held for 48 minutes? First of all, Reddick don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm going to say it. Right? I agree. He don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm like, what basketball was you watch? The physicality that was a part of the league. Hey, look, when you can put your hand on a guy's hip and make him go a certain way, if you can put that elbow in his chest to slow him up, which we call slowing a guy up when you're coming down the lane, so how many guys can deal with that type of pressure? And for J.J. Reddick, who played this game, I'm very disappointed that he has said something so stupid. This yeah. is the thing I'm having a problem with. Bird, who's a big guy, who got bumped all the time, you know, yeah. we played around the basket more than guards played around the basket. So I don't understand the logic for him saying that. Yeah. When clearly those big guys, even to the big guys today, they get touched a little bit more than little guys because they're around the basket. So it just don't make sense when, this is the thing I hate the most. We had our time. It was a great time. It's their time now. Yes. But don't crap on us to prove your point. Yeah. Because it doesn't make sense and it's not valid. Yeah. But the same thing they look at Sam and myself. Oh, the big the old guys uh, hating. No, we hate on what? I don't hate on no. these guys. You're, happy you're responding right now. Yeah. You're not. I'm I don't hate on these guys. These guys are great. I don't. I just don't like the disrespect. Yeah. Yeah. And to say that about Larry Bird. It was yeah, less, less physicality. Is he back stupid? To back, yeah. back MVP. It, it, it's just a, it's just a stupid comment to make. I mean, it ain't got nothing to do with Steph Curry or Larry. Yeah. It's the content. Exactly. We just of, broke down the, yeah. the it's, end it's, it's, result. It doesn't make sense. And he should know better than that. Yeah. And I don't care what he feel about me, you know, what his response might be. But to, when I hear that, and I'm like, you really don't know, do you? Young kids today don't learn how to shoot hook shots is because everybody is so enamored with the three-point shot. So the kids, they don't want two points. Uh, they don't want to work with their back to the basket. That's not cool. They want to go out there uh, in the stratosphere and shoot three-pointers. Uh, I didn't think that that worked for the longest time. That did not work as solid basketball strategy. But now uh, when we have a time when you have people <coughs> like uh, Stephen Curry, who can shoot the ball, he, he can, I've never seen anybody shoot like that. I'll, I'll give you an explanation. Uh, they showed Stephen uh, shooting 100 three-point shots in practice. He shot, he, he made 92 out of 100 <laughs> from the three-point arc, including seven, 77 in a row. This is just practicing, right? So uh, anybody that can shoot like that is, uh, on a different plane <laughs> from all the guys that I played against and the people that I saw when I first started watching the game in, in 1960. I, I never seen anybody shoot the ball like that. And if that is the coming uh, talent level of uh, NBA players, um, they're gonna be forgetting a lot about the, the guys that played in, in my era and the earlier eras of the NBA because uh, 
the talent level of the, of the guys playing now has really risen. But they're not teaching the young kids how to score in the paint uh, with their back to the basket. And therefore, they don't, uh, a lot of them don't get to learn the hook shot. And they don't get to realize that uh, if you get close to the basket, a lot more of your shots will go in. <laughs> Just because Dirk is seven feet tall and he's a great shooter, just because Kevin Durant is seven foot and he's a great shooter, that don't mean all you other seven foot dummies should be out there shooting jump. And I want to make it clear, I'm not the old man get off my lawn. Uh, there, there's a couple reasons why I think it, it's stupid to play like that. Because number one, you take your size advantage out the game. Uh, why do I want Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Davis? Why do I want guys who are physically uh, bigger and stronger. Why did I, I want them out on the perimeter? That helps me as a defender. Instead of trying to stop one of those big guys in the post, they gonna shoot jumpers. And listen, let's be real, how many great big guys jump shooters there are? Now you, you have to, Kevin Durant and Dirk Nowitzki, those guys are anomaly, but I'm talking about big guys. But I don't understand why you would take your physical advantage away uh, because number one, now guys don't even get in, big guys don't even get in foul trouble because they, they're out on the perimeter. One of the weaknesses of Joel Embiid's game, he's one of the most talented players we have in the NBA. If I'm going Joel Embiid, I'm on cloud nine and he's shooting threes. I can't double, I, I can't stop him in the post. He's gonna draw a double team and get you wide open threes or he's gonna get you in foul trouble. But when he shoots threes, I guarantee you the defender's like, man, that was so easy. And now, 15, 20 years later, you got guys shooting threes. It's cute. It's not something I would do. And somebody asked me the other day, oh, Shaq couldn't play today. But you're not paying attention. I am playing today. My name is Greek Freak. Who was the first big guy to take you coast to coast? Oh, you don't remember? Check this play out. I play just like Greek Freak. Take it off the glass, high percentage shots. High percentage shots. I shoot a three every now and then, so I would actually love to play in this game. It's less physical. I would bring a, a, a little bit more physicality. I would bring my length, I would bring my athleticness, and I'd be Greek Freak. So before you say Shaq can't play in this era today, I'm already playing. My name is Giannis Antetokounmpo, however you pronounce it. A negative person will look at it as critical. But if you know who you are, you should look at it as information. Mm -hmm. And I've said this the, the, the many times. Like if I look at him and say he shouldn't have took that shot, he's either going to say, okay, I'm going to keep taking it and make it this time or shut you up or he's going to listen to what I'm saying. Like, you know what, maybe I should step in. Mm -hmm. Not making fun. Don't need to make fun. When I give you information, I'm giving it to you raw. I'm giving it to you like I would give it to you if we was playing. If I was playing with him and he took a crazy shot while I'm in the post, I would say, Trey, don't take that shot, right? Mm -hmm. But again, as a player, you know who you are. Shaq, shut your ass up, watch this. You hit five in a row, I can't say nothing. Right. Or you listen to what the big man is saying who's won four championships, say, you know what, maybe he's right. So a negative person will look at it, oh, he's hating. I can't hate, giving you information. What, I, what I've always learned about criticizing, especially from players that's been there and done that, if you've been there and done that, I will listen to you, right? And if you do criticize me, I will look, I will listen to that and see if there's some truth into that. Michael, I was just at Michael Jordan's 60th birthday party. He pulled me to the side. And you know, we talked about that for 30 straight that's minutes. Because really? back in the day, you guys, no, you played every game. No we we wanted to play every single game. We couldn't wait to get out there on the court. Mm -hmm. And it's about your ego, your passion, your love for the mm -hmm. game. Yeah. It's about those fans who, like you said, pay yeah. their hard earned, earned money to watch you play yeah. this game of basketball. And then we're getting paid to play something that we love. <laughs> sure. I mean, right. you know, so you got to get out there. And last but not least, it's about your team, where you stand. Yeah. You're losing games when you yeah. sit out. Yes. And so uh, I dislike it. I hope they get rid of it. And um, for the fans and for the organization and uh, for the overall health of the game. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me, do you agree with any of these legends takes on today's NBA? So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.